But what, what marketing is, is just clearing the murkiness, right? The more that that murkiness is cleared, the easier someone is to make the decision to buy or not. Someone that, that sounds super relaxed, chilled, and easygoing, that's so much easier. And it's better content for you know, social media as well. If you want to go viral, that's easier content. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I'm your host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs lead their ideal lives by creating better businesses. I'm a certified EOS implementer, an FBA-accredited family business advisor, and a business owner myself with several business interests. I work with established business owners and their leadership teams to help them live their ideal entrepreneurial lives using EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. My guests come on the show to authentically share the highs and lows of actually running a business, uh, but also I bring on experts as well. And in this case, our guest is actually both of those, both a successful business owner and also an expert in his field. So today's guest has actually been dancing professionally uh, for 15 years in West Coast Swing and other partner dancing. He is both a teacher and a, um, a competitive dancer. He's a committee, he's on the committee, not the committee, he's on the committee of the Marketing Club, which is um, New Zealand's leading kind of marketing club. He is a father of two kids, which is the reason why he started his business. And he's got Charlie, who's a beautiful little girl, and Jaden, who reminds me of a young Steve. He's like a maths genius. I'm, I suspect we've got an actuary in the making there. <laughs> so today... We are going to learn about the value of video outside of social media, because we often talk about using video in social media, but it's so much more powerful than that. So I'd like to introduce you to Michael Pohm, who's the founder of Vouch Video Testimonials. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you very much, Deborah. What an honor. Thank you very much for having me on here. Oh, my absolute pleasure. So we obviously know each other from outside of this studio and chatting with Michael Reese. I said, look, you got to come to the show and share with me the stuff that you actually know. So. We met in an unusual kind of situation in that I think I met you first and then I started working with your wife who That's actually right. runs her, your partner who runs her own, her own business. So she's got a, a, a dance studio with a, a number of team members as well. And then, of course, we made the connection and we realized that actually I knew you both, but you were together. And I, I just remember the first time I really got to chat to you. I just happened to be on my, like one of the, some of my worst days because I was sick and, and we were overseas together on a retreat and I just remember sharing a boat with you. I'm like, I want to make a good impression with you, but I just, I'm just trying to drum up this energy to be really like engaging with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, to be honest, I knew that you were unwell and I know how difficult it could be when, especially when you're unwell and overseas traveling. So I got it. And to be fair, we'd met before that anyway. So I'd actually already got a, a bit of a sense of what you're going on. But anyway, you have an interesting kind of background because you have not always been a business owner. And in fact, when did you start this business? So this business is only a, a year old. I've been in the video game professionally for four years. I run, I run businesses, so Airbnbs and whatnot, since just before COVID. But before that, I was, just, I was in recruitment for about 12 years. Oh, wow. Okay. Recruitment. Yeah, I was in recruitment for 12 years. And I guess what I've kind of done now is kind of brought all that recruitment science all that interview technique um no because i've recruited from you no know, bulk recruitment you no know, filling up a whole restaurant through to shoulder tapping people going on linkedin finding people and then just really making relationships so michael i'd love to hear a little bit about your story because you've not always been a business owner but you chose to go into business ownership after having a career elsewhere so tell us a bit about how you got to where you are now how long's vouch been going for what were you doing beforehand so Vouch has only been going for about a year. Before that, uh, I was doing professionally videos for about four years. And then before that, oh, I was doing Airbnb. But really, the reason why I kind of got into this the space of video testimonials was that my career was 12 years in the making in recruitment. So when I brought in the, all the recruitment science, the, uh, the, the interview techniques, the relationship building, because when you're in recruitment, you're not just you know, kind of scanning through, or you know, especially on the high end anyway, you're, you're really building a relationship. Even if they don't fit into this particular job, you want them to fit into another job. So as much as I'm trying to siphon out what really makes them tick, I'm also trying to build a relationship with them. 
So when I kind of got into the whole video world and said, you know what, I love I love using technology. I love using the cameras. I love using um, all the lighting equipment and whatnot. But what really made me tick and really made me um, fall in love with the whole interview process was that you can really connect with someone on camera and then the stories that gets told with those with that emotion it gets told so much better so okay. and i just remember this one time i was asked i was working with a client and i didn't know them from a bar so 15 minutes in and they were crying they were crying with you know because they 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 were just so blessed with the work that the client was working uh, no was was doing my, my client and and they were like, wow. It was, it was, so it was at that point in, you know, of my career, I was like, I can, I can do video testimonials full time because I feel like I've got the ability to ask great questions, really connect with someone, and I've got the technical knowledge to make something look amazing on video as well. So that, that's really how Vouch came about, was that that one particular client said, uh, no, no, just, just showed emotion, showed so much emotion. And I, like I said, I didn't know them from a bar of soap 15 minutes beforehand. And with 15 minutes, I was able to, to tap into some inner emotions. That's obviously a skill you're up there. It's really interesting, isn't it? Because you now have a guarantee. And this is part of my EOS stuff. No, but this is what I'm going to Because part of EOS is we always say you should have a proven process and you should have a guarantee. And your guarantee always makes me smile whenever I see it. So what is your guarantee? It's the hug back guarantee. It's the vouch hug back guarantee. And you, you're allowed to high five me as well if, you're, if you don't like hugs. That came about because over the last year, no, so, so while I've been doing vouch, I've, I've asked a lot of people to do video testimonials for, for me, for, for vouch. And that happened. I didn't do anything with, with, with the videos. It just kind of sat in the background while I was, I was working for my, uh, no, for all my clients, creating my clients' content. One day I was, I was like, no, 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 Mike, I need to start creating content for myself. And I just, you know, put all my content all together. And it just happened that I was always capturing the end of the uh, videos where I was hugging all my clients. It was, it was amazing. So I've done 20, over the last year, I've done 22 video testimonials for myself. And it wasn't until I was like, I started adding them up. I was like, wow, I've hugged everyone or, or I have had a very emotional like, relationship with all my clients that, that has vouched for me 22 times. So I was like, well, you know what? This is more than just, so, so when I created the, the, the guarantee, it's more than just the workmanship. It's the way I build the relationship. It's the way you can expect to work with me. It's also... In the future, uh, when I am hiring you know, people for the team, and I'm, I'm also looking at franchising, you no, know, in the future, I want to, I want to be able to pass that on. It's you know as a as a value. You know, you're not just coming on board at Vouch to to create you know, to to create videos, and you no, know, the only thing that I'm looking at is is just the quality of video. No, that's not the thing. It's actually the whole full relationship it's the, from start to finish that if they're not willing to hug you at the end or, or give you a high five or a very emotional high five, no, we'll give you your money. You know, we're, 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 we're not just dedicated to the creation of the uh, content of the video, but also the relationship. You know, yeah, the one video doesn't count to us. It's, it's the full relationship. It's, it's what we can get at the, you know, the, the second, the third, the fourth. We want to be your partner. You're, you're speaking my language in terms of mm -hmm. values and the process and everything else. Obviously, you know, it's just seeping into you through your wife in, in terms of osmosis. But... <laughs> so we're here to talk, to talk more about video as a whole, though. So video, everybody sort of knows they should be doing some kind of video content. The most obvious thing is you see people on LinkedIn doing video content. And I've seen that uh, really increase out of sight in the last few years. Like I think when I was doing video three or four years ago, hardly anybody was doing it. And now you've got, you know, every man and his dog just about feels like they are. So we know the value in that. And we, we know there's TikTok. And, and I've always been quite blown away. I never wanted to be on TikTok. I couldn't see the point in it. I'm a professional business person. Why would I be on TikTok? Until I actually posted a video about how to run an EOS Level 10 meeting. And that's now been seen by over 126,000 people and a whole bunch of likes. And you kind of go, okay, TikTok's obviously more than just funny dances because I wasn't doing any kind of funny dance. 
So we know there's value in, in, in video, but why, why is it? Why do people use video? Why do people like video? Well, people like video because it's engaging. You know, you, you can cut through a lot of things. I guess the medium of video is that you can show rather than tell. So the, the, the boring videos or the videos that, that tend to get skipped quite a bit is when people sit, on, sit in front of a camera and just tell people what, what it is rather than showing the whole experience. You know, I've, I've created plenty of videos where you know, someone's talking about their values. Oh, our value is um, friendship. Our value is uh, openness. Is, uh, whatever their values are. But as a video editor, as a, as a videographer, show them, you know, what does that mean? You know, when your, your company is inclusive, what does that mean? Show what inclusive is, rather than just talking about, oh, we celebrate um, Rainbow Day or wh whatever it is. Like, no, give me some footage of how you, sh uh, how you celebrate that, right? And I just think, you know, uh, there's a stat out there that, what is it, 85% of all consumer traffic, uh, internet traffic, is video. Yeah, so we're not talking about big data transfers. We're just talking about normal person. Me, you and I kind of search, uh, what, what do we kind of consume online? 85% of that, or even more, I think, is, is, is video. I saw some stats about how big YouTube has become. Like, it's just phenomenal. And it's watched not just on our laptops anymore, but on our TVs as well. So we're, we're, all, we're all actually watching stuff that we used to perhaps watch on our laptop or our, or our computer screen actually on our TVs at home now as well. Whenever I go home in the evening, Jaden would love this. Steve's always sitting there watching some kind of maths or physics video uh, on YouTube. He spends every, every afternoon doing that, so it's quite cool. But what is the secret to video then? So you're saying we shouldn't just sit there and kind of talk at them, we have to show. But there's a certain skill in that, isn't it? Like storytelling. What, what, do you, what do you say people have to do to get the showy bit across? I think, I think our priorities uh, are wrong sometimes. Uh, a lot. So... I find I find a lot of people that I talk to, they talk about they want views, they want people. You no, know, they're looking for viralness. Everyone's looking for viralness, and 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 what I'm saying is that the amount of views or or it's important, of course, because that's how you count how how good a piece of uh, yeah that, that's right. But really, who's viewing it? Are the right people viewing it? Are you talking to the the, the millions of you no, know, the, the billions of people in this world, or are you talking to your client? So here, here's an example: uh, if you were doing open heart surgery and you've never done open heart surgery before, and the only resource that you had is a, a, a video, one hour video of of how to do open heart surgery, guess what? You're going to be watching that one particular video over and over and over again until you have it absolutely right. So the whole idea... By the way, we do not recommend anybody does open heart surgery from YouTube videos. Just saying, <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer. But yeah, I hear you. So you're going to watch it over and over again to make sure you get it right. Yeah. The, how successful a piece of video is, it's not like the amount of views it is. It's how well does it connect with your client or, or your audience, you know, the people that really matter to you. So if you're creating content for your, for your business, really have your business clients in mind of what, what you're creating. So even if it doesn't create you no know, viralness, it's still a good piece of content. So what I'm wanting to say is that a lot of people are thinking about the top of the funnel marketing. That's your social media, your YouTube, your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikToks, all those. You know, it's great to invite people into your world. But if you want them to sit down and really understand how your business works, and you no, know, for for your clients to go, oh, okay, cool. I uh, that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to buy that, or, or I'm going to I'm going to uh, no ring up to find out. That all requires a lot of communication, a lot of what boring information, you no, know, to 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 the mass. But no, it's not boring if I'm buying something that's worth two hundred thousand dollars. It's not boring if I'm committing you no know, three months worth of salary on something. Before I buy a, a jet ski, you know, I'm going to go on, uh, go find out reviews. I'm going to find out how that, you no, know, this versus that. So it's, I just find that a lot of companies get fixated on virality. And I've heard that a lot too. And I think it's actually, it's really important to note, very, very few things actually go viral as well. And often it's not for the right reasons. So you can go viral and it's not necessarily a positive thing. 
I'm actually in the process of writing a book at the moment. I'm working with a book book coach and a book publishing company. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that they said to me straight away was, you know, who is your target audience? And part of me sort of went, you know, I was really clear about who my target audience was and who I wanted to talk to and what I wanted to share with them in terms of value. But then another part of my human brain kind of goes, but if I just do that, I'm going to miss out on all this other stuff over here. And fortunately, I, I you know, had a realization that it's okay. You can write that book and then you can write another book for another audience and another book for another audience. But it, as, it actually is really important that you know who you're talking to, whether that be in a book, whether that be on video, because you have to add real value, not generic. Yeah, there's a there's a good book called They Ask You Answer. Have you ever? Yes, I have actually. I, well, I've I've got it. Yes, it's on my bedside table, so I'm hoping by osmosis it will come in. But it's on my it's on my reading list because I got recommended by a friend to actually read that. Yeah. Yeah. So so if you're looking at doing some content creation, um, and it's not about video in particular, but it's really about what does your client, what information do they need, and answering that in as blatant don't know in a straightforward way as possible that that that's the main gist of it you know they, they, they suggest a few different things but you know like you know, talk about pricing you know like how does pricing get gets created talk about why things take so long talk about you know that just people the, the more the more what what marketing is is just clearing a murkiness right the more that that murkiness is cleared, the easier someone is to make that make the decision to buy or not. Yeah. So the idea of like answering their questions is just clearing the murkiness. So, in terms of video testimonials, particularly, you know, so it's really clear, really important that we're very clear that we clear away the murkiness that we answer the questions that our clients are like, your customers are likely to want to hear. What is the 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 real skill to producing a great video testimonial do you think well what what do you do that because i mean it's great that you can get the emotion out of people what why is that important and how do you do that i, I think t- kind of taking a step back you have to do good work like uh, the the work that you do has to be absolutely amazing you know i've, I've had a few people that that uh, they probably wouldn't have gone five stars or whatnot and they're trying to ask for it like you just can't hide it you can't hide it right so first of all you have to do amazing work but second of all, for me, I don't need someone that's eccentric. I don't need someone that 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 uh, loves being on camera. It, all walks of life deserves to be heard, right? Um, that person that I was uh, talking about, um, she was dyslexic. Yeah, she was dyslexic. And the whole idea behind it is because she was dyslexic. And I kept asking her a particular question. I was like, oh, how did, how did these guys help you? How did these guys help you? And she just kept ask, uh, asking me, answering me, oh, they helped me with my paperwork. I didn't realize she was dyslexic. And it wasn't until I asked her uh, in a different way. And then she just broke down, oh, okay, I'm, I'm dyslexic, okay. I'm, um, uh, no, they really helped me with XYZ, ABC. And uh, I looked over to my, my camera and so I was like, oh, what are they calling? Yes, yes, yes. I, and I knew that you know, she was kind of quivering already. You know, we d- it didn't make the cut of, uh, of the end video. But I just remember asking her, just looking directly into her eyes and said, yeah, how did that make you feel? And I just, I just remember it so fondly, just because it's such an honor when someone does open up and talk about that. And and that's not always going to happen with everyone, right? It's but to have those truthful conversations and not just be a, a marketing activity. No, so many times it's just a clipboard, a whole lot of questions that pre 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 created. I just don't think those questions or the way, you know, the, the, those words create for great communication. Communication is so much more than the words that you use. It's the way that you interact with those words. And I think interacting and, and, and the, 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 the emotions behind it, you can capture all that. You can capture all that. You can, and, and you know when someone's sincere, you know, when, or someone's reading out of a teleprompter or something like that, you can truly tell. And I guess my job is to use, use the technology to capture that, that, that honour that I get of asking questions with people. I, I, I was interviewing a principal last week and I was talking to her about a music programme. And, and she, she, she just came out and said, this music programme, help change the life of some of 
my students. And I just sit and I just remember swelling in my eyes, just swelling in my eyes and, and just letting, letting that sit and, and grow. I mean, so to me, that's what video testimonials are. It's, it's, it's understanding people. It's understanding people and really communicating and just capturing on, on, on camera. Why is that important? Well, the, the reason why that is important is because, you know, especially for my target audience, my target audience is professional service providers. They don't have a product for, you know, a physical product for you to touch, to see, to feel, to sniff, whatever it is. What they, they do have is the goodwill on their previous jobs. Their, their service is only as good as their last job. That's right. So that goodwill, you can't touch. You know, no one. So what I do, uh, and, and if I can get that, those emotions out, is to show what, how you would feel or what it might feel like or, or, or know what services will, will you get based off, based off those uh, testimonials. The thing is that how I see it is that you can, any service that you buy, let's say a builder, you can pay anyone to build you a house. What you're really buying when you go to a builder is the experience of working with that builder. So what you want to capture on those video testimonials is the experience, not the end product. Every, you, know, you, you, you fork enough money out of it, any house can get built the way you want it exactly, but they're not going to take you through the same exact the, um, emotional process. Funny you chose that as an example. I've actually, I actually worked with a builder over in Melbourne. They do high-end homes, and their guarantee, so they've also got an EOS guarantee as well, is that they'll still be friends with you at the end, or you'll still be friends with them at the end of the building process. And if you think about it, it's one of those fears for most people, right, is that often you end up getting into fights with builders, that the things that they quoted for don't quite end up being what you get at the end. And so uh, that's their guarantee, and they actually do it by also providing a, a 12-month inspection of the home forever just to always check and make sure it's all okay and everything, which is, which is really good marketing because um, it, it means they are living by their guarantee that you definitely will be friends at the end of it. And then they're seeing their clients at least once every 12 months, even when they're no longer clients. So yeah, I hear, I hear you. So what you're saying is that for those things, I mean, yes, let's face it, you would hope that any builder, being a master builder, is going to build the, the house at the end of the day. It's how that relationship actually went and that's what people, they really buy into because at the end of the day, it's about more than just the, the money. There, yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, it's the it's your systems. It's your it's the way you treat them. It's the answering on the phone. It's the when things don't go right. What happens during that time? You know, when when the budget gets blown out because sometimes you can't ha handle, but the budget is blown because you can't. Uh, the, the the builder isn't in control of of the price spikes. Price spikes. So how do you communicate that? How do you how do you lead that person through the journey? You know, and that's what needs to be captured. That's really the product you're selling, not the house. It's that journey. Wonderful. Okay. So I, I've got used to being on camera now. It took a, in the beginning, I hated it. And in fact, to be fair, I never listen to my own podcast, never watch my own podcast because I don't like seeing myself. But I'm quite happy to sit here and be on camera uh, for other people's amusement. But in the beginning, I didn't enjoy it. But I think I have a natural affinity for it. So it became quite easy quite quickly. What about people who feel nervous? They're like, oh, but I don't want to be on camera. Or they're worried about how they're going to look. Or how do you, how do you work with those people? How do you relax them? How do I relax them? Is, is I guess in the short amount of time that I'm with them, the whole, the whole idea behind Vouch is that I, it's, it's only as long as a coffee break. You know, if your coffee break is 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes. So if it's 60 minutes, it's 60 minutes. But so within that time, I can't make them feel comfortable in front of them. You know, they, they can't be intrinsically comfortable. But I, what I can do is that I can sit down and talk to you eye to eye and get you to forget about the camera. You know, I, I, I tell them, no, don't, don't look directly straight into the camera. That's when you get scared. When I start talking to you and start talking just like a, you know, a coffee date or you know, whatever it is, it's just, you know, you forget about it. And when I'm really listening, when I'm really kind of trying to process what you've just said, you, you, you spend time to just really think about what you're trying to say. And the moment that I'm not truly listening and I'm just looking, at the cam looking through the camera, I just, become, you know, I, I just become an object that they're speaking to. 
yeah, you lost them. And that's when I'm overthinking. And that's when I'm going, I'm an R and I'm worried about it. And I guess ums and ahs, because I, the thing is that what I do is that in the 30 minute interview, and I'm all, all I'm doing is cutting it into a two to three minute video. I'm cutting out all the ums and ahs. It's up to me to tell that story in a, in a concise way. It's not up to you, especially as the client's client, no, the guest. They're, they, in, in their mind, they've done their job. They've paid. They're doing this as a little bit extra because they've done just such a great job. But they're not there to sell your service. They're not here to, to kind of really promote you. They're, they're here to just, you know, talk. Yeah, sure. They don't, they don't deserve to try and remember lines. They, they, that, that's not them. They're just there to share. And they, they've only got 20, to, to 20 minutes to an hour. So it's really up to the person, the interviewer, the, the editors, to get the right information and cut it into and tell that story for them as well. So, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of where, I, where I'm sitting. Now, to answer your question, it's, it's not up to them to worry, to worry about being on camera. It's up to you to kind of get them to forget about that. Make them feel comfortable. It's a bit like us talking here now. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, we've got cameras and lights and everything, but we're actually just having a conversation. Yeah. Do you ever write anything down? Because one of the things I've found within my own podcast is when I'm really intently listening to people, I like to better take some notes. And so you'll often see in the video is I'll be asking a question, I'm suddenly writing something down, which it looks like, apparently my editor says, it looks like I'm paying zero attention to them. But in actual fact, I'm just capturing it because I am a writer and I like writing things down. How do you do that in your interviews or is that no? I, I find that the more intently I listen and kind of let all the, all, all the technology just do its own thing, the more I get a relaxed conversation out of it. And that relaxed conversation is so much more important to me than the content that's coming out of their mouth. Because, yeah, they, they might be saying word for word what the company wants to hear. But if it's not, if it's said in a robotic way, it just, I don't even know if I can use it if it sounds robotic. You know, someone that, that sounds super relaxed, chilled, and, and easygoing, that's so much easier. And it's better, better content for, for you know, social media as well. If you want to go viral, you know, that, that's easier content. Yeah, and I think you're right. I mean, it, it comes down to what the video is being used for. You're doing a company profile. Of course, it's going to be professional and polished and you need to say the, the key messages of the organization. But in general terms, conversations is where the, the real stories come through and the emotions come through too. And, and, and I guess that's why, you know, actors are, so, are paid so much. It's like they can say the company line so much better and uh, no, in such a relaxed and easy tone. That's why they do get paid that, that, that amount, you know. But yeah, they're, they're amazing. <laughs> okay, so other uses for, so your customer testimonials, I'm assuming you put your customer testimonials on your website. Other uses for it? What else do you yeah, do Yeah, well, them? like I said, I, I don't actually, um, you know, if I create a video and it's thousands of dollars, there's only, um, there's only uh, if, if they tell me, oh, I'm going to put it on social media, well, the, the shelf life of that, I don't know, two, three months maximum. Where you really find, ba uh, uh, no. yeah, where you really find the return on investment is on your proposals, on your RFPs, on your quotes, you know. So if you've got someone, let's say a young couple that you're, you're working with, send them another young couple that was in their particular situation. Let's, let's say a mortgage advisor, you're working with a young couple first house, first house that they're looking at buying they don't know if they're choosing you or another mortgage advisor hey look i've worked with this young couple that yeah this exactly similar and look at what they've had to say you can use that for two three four years yeah so it becomes like a show reel right but you've got all these different videos for different scenarios that you can actually tailor it again a bit like writing a book but I tailor it for the person you're talking to so if i'm talking to somebody so i'm talking to a male business owner who's working in building engineering Probably not best that I show them a female virtual assistant company because they get or a da or your wife's dance studio, right? Because they're going to kind of go, yeah, it doesn't really relate to me. So it's about having a, a, a book of all these different things that you can bring out at the right time. And on top of that, just video, and I, I deal with video testimonials, obviously. But on top of that, I think where where companies or well, websites aren't using videos well enough, really, is you know they attract you with the big 
brand messaging video, you know, the company slogan and what does the business do and uh, the about us video. Those are the big ones. Those are the ones that companies always use. And like I said, I go, let's go back to that stat I was saying. 85% of all traffic is video. How much of your website is video? You know, 5%, 10%, you know. So why does that not correlate? You know, and um, again, everyone's trying to tow the, that company in line with uh, you know, the, the right words and whatnot. But again, with video and the, the convenience of video now, why is the, why, why is, you know, when you go in and book a, a, a slot, a, t a time slot with you for, for a meeting, why, why is there no video to explain what this time slot is and what, is, what are you expecting to hear? And what, what are you, and how long is it going to be? This is a time lapse of what that video is. And this is the content that we're going to cover. Yep. Well, um, maybe not a sped up version of me. They'd uh, never understand it. <laughs> uh, no, with the voiceover, maybe. But th th then, yeah. Uh, and then your pr pricing, you know, uh, again, like I uh, talk about the pricing. How, you know, even if you can't give a, well, a solid pricing for, for that thing, how is it calculated? You know, if you're building a kitchen, okay, well, this is, um, you know, uh, no, the square meterage and depending on the type of um, the material that you're trying to use you know that should all, all be a video or all, all, all should be video content like i said i don't think new zealand companies and websites are using video to the best of their, their ability i'm thinking i don't really use it online which is interesting yeah it's not the be all and end all though right because i'm actually not a video watcher so i'm terrible i don't really watch videos and so you've always got to have both options available haven't you you're you're, you're absolutely right you're absolutely right but what, like I said, it's, it's to show, not to tell. So if, you, if I can tell you what the processes are, the five-step process, but show me, show me what those five steps look like. And I think also, I think that, I remember when I did my first videos many, many years ago, a videographer, it was about telling, yeah, my story and how I work with people. And it, it, was, it was showing them, like me out with the dogs, yeah, walking the dogs and me in, in my Porsche at the time and just various things that I, was, were really important to me. And what it actually did, I think, for me is that when people first met me for the first time, because they'd already watched that video, they felt like they already knew me. And so it broke down that initial barrier of, oh, you're a complete stranger. I don't know who I'm talking to. I think when you show, on the other side, when you show your clients, your customers talking, people will listen and kind of go, yeah, that's me. And that's, if it, the, more, the more yeses you can get in somebody's head before they meet you, the more likelihood you've got of actually um, converting them. That, that's that's why personal branding is so important at the moment, right? People want to you know. People are dealing with a person, right? You know, you're you're dealing with personality, and then you want to show who you are as a person, you know, and how do you respond to stress? How do you respond to you know celebrations? So uh, I, I guess that's why personal branding and personal branding videos and people, uh, you know, uh, what what is it? influencers are such such a big thing right now because we want to know how people react and how people, how, what you can, what can you expect when dealing with a company or business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for those people who are considering doing this on their own, I think what I'm hearing you say, and, and this is not a sales pitch for you at all, but it's like actually the, the technical bit, the putting the camera in front of somebody is a very, very small amount of it. The biggest part is actually in the, the way that you actually bring the best out of that person, yeah? Yeah, uh, cho choosing the right person. No, firstly, they, they have to adore exactly what, the, no, what you do. They, they love exactly what, uh, what you do. But yeah, a absolutely. It's, it's asking the right questions and, and, and really asking deeper questions than just the, the surface level, was like, no, rate me out of t uh, five or something like that. It's, it's like, what, what does easy mean? You know what they took care of all the all the work. Mean Deborah took me into a, a a workshop and I just came out with clarity. What does clarity mean? You know, and, and and that makes for the best content for me to be able to edit as well. You know, for, for anyone to be able to edit. I mean, you can really dive into what that means. That yeah, you know the from the dive five wise under and you you know exactly what it is. But yeah, what what motivates someone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Harvard Five Whys, for those of you who are listening who don't, haven't heard of it, it's something we actually encourage in our IDSing in EOS as well, is like just keep asking what curious child, so why is that? And then why is that? And why is that? And why is that? And who does it affect and when and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, really important. Okay, cool. In terms of top tips for people listening on the podcast, what would you say your three kind of top tips are if they're either haven't been using video and considering doing it or haven't used client testimonials or considering doing it, what are the, the three top tips you would share? I, I think, um, you, you know, the, 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 they ask you answer book. 
absolute read it. If you're wanting to get into content creation, that really gives you a good idea of what your audience will want to see. You know? So yeah, that that's always being client centric, client being client centric, uh, be, being audience centric of 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 what what to create for them, you know, and stop worrying about going viral. Uh, stop going about being. Uh, I mean, yeah, going viral is just when that when what you're saying or what you're doing or what you're showing connects with them, right? And once you connect with them on a particular level, yeah, that will go viral. And I, I think also, I think what's important, I always sort of liken social media and videos, particularly on social media, to being the the TV adverts of the future in some respects. So it's actually, it's, I mean, obviously you want to be engaging. Yes, you want to get people involved and sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. But if you're consistent and you've got consistent marketing out there, then they are at least seeing you at some point. And at some point they'll see a piece of content they want to look more at. So, you know, if you put one piece out and go, ooh, I didn't get very many likes or it didn't really perform very well, you're doing yourself a disservice by stopping there because I know I've now been putting out content for well, millions of years. And, you know, sometimes you, you look at the stuff and, and nobody responds. And other times you have people who are like, wow, that was really helpful. Thank you so much. We're just so into, uh, yeah. The, yeah. The, the instant, instant gratification. That's right. The dopamine. That's I know, right. I know. But that's not, what's, it's not what's important. It's like writing the book. You've got to think about who you're trying to reach and give them real value. Yeah, being client-centric is, is absolutely, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, t- the top tip I can, I can give. It's just really thinking about who it is that you're, you're talking to. So, you know, going back to that um, analogy of, of that, that open heart surgeon, you know, talk, talk to that open heart the, the, the open heart surgeon that only has your videos at all to, to, to learn how to do open and heart surgery. Yeah. That, what about giving away too much content? You know, I'm, I'm very abundance minded and I've always believed that I can give away everything that I know because you can actually Google everything I know anyway. I think I know is unique. But some people are really nervous. Like, oh, but if I give them the how-to or I show them what they can do, then they'll never come in and use our service. Information is so cheap these days. You know, it's, we're not back in the day where, where you need, you know, only a select few families had an ency- a, a, a set of encyclopedia. You know, so you had to go over to your friend's house to, to, to write down, oh, what does that mean? So it's so cheap. Chat GPT, you type in, oh, what does, you know, and it all comes up. You go on Google. There's billions of pages out there. It's so cheap. So, in saying that, what's the value of the actual information that you're holding? Is it as easy as you know, doing a quick search? If it's as easy as doing a quick search, then I'd say sell the implementation. Yeah, sell the implementation. Sell the execution. No, and even if you do give give away how I do my execution, how many people are actually going to execute that that particular way? If they do, you're hey. Guess what? You've got a you got got a first mover's advantage. <laughs> no, it's true, and it's. I mean, you think about how many books we read, and you read the book, and you think, oh, so good. And do we actually do anything with it? So, yeah, a lot of people, especially when you're in the service industry, people want you to help them. So that's what you do. Okay, cool. Any other final tips before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah, just use more video. Like I said, eighty five percent of of all traffic is is, is um is video and how much of that is in your, on your website? How much, how much video is on your website? It's obviously saying that we like to consume content in video format. So, so if you take nothing else from this podcast, I would definitely recommend you have a look at your, your website. I know I'm going to right now and see what, um, what video content there is there. Or even like say, um, you know, come to, to come to our location, show, uh, give us a, a video of where to park. You know, it's, it's, it's so those small <laughs> mundane things that, Oh, how do I find parking? If parking's not here, where, where else could I find parking? Done right now. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Michael, pleasure as always. Thank you for sharing your, your advice and your tips and things. And obviously we'll put your contact information in the bottom of the podcast. So if you want to contact Michael, by all means do that. But yeah, um, lovely to have you on my video. Thank you, Tim. Oh, you. this was fun. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>